Well, hello there. Welcome back to another Genshin Impact video. Last time, we wanted to start the new Lantern Ride event, but it said that we were recommended to do the... What's, what's that? Shen Yun? The Sh Shen Yun Story Quest. And so, indeed, last time we started the Shen Yun Story Quest so that our Lantern Ride will be a better experience. So, we started that. Cloud Retainer seems to want to meet up with Shen He and Ganyu again because it seems like she has been a bit lonely. So I went with Ganyu, we went with Shen he, and they seem to be doing well for themselves, you know. Getting a little bits of information about Cloud Retainer, she seems to be super strong, but also at the same time, pretty lonely. And so she's here to have fun. She's off talking, or I should say, these two came to our table while we were eating at Shen he's establishment that she was working at. One min restaurant. And Yuan Dai is an old lady who seems to have forgotten memory. Maybe dementia is what Shu Yu has said that the old lady has. And Cloud Retainer has taken a liking to the situ or liking to the situation. She seems to want to help the situation. And so yeah, we're we're helping Yun Dai Yuan Dai kind of reclaim the memory that she had. Apparently she saw someone in a dream. And if they and she meets that person in the dream, then she's free or something. So we're helping her out with that, indeed. Uh huh. Shen Yun. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna. I, I'm. I'm gonna interchange Shen Yun and Cloud a lot, I suppose. But Shen Yun is off seeing Street Word Rambler, of course. Of course. I mean, I don't know why we didn't talk to with her earlier because we were up there with Gan Yu. But anyways, so we're off. We know that this old lady a long time ago used to be, or she says that she used to be a famous kind of fighter who saved a bunch of people. Again, very Adeptus like. I'm getting Adeptus vibes from her. Especially since Shen Yun saw her as familiar. So, who better to know of local legends than our big, our great friend Shen Cho? Shen Cho? Shen Cho? Yes, our boy. And here he is. Huh, it's you two. What brings you here? Shincho! Great, we found you! We wanted to ask you about something. You explain the situation to Shincho. Shincho, I think. Mm. That's not a whole lot of information to go off of. I don't know if I can say for sure. Anything helpful, isn't it? Anything is helpful and appreciated. I can't pinpoint her identity from your description alone. But considering her age, I am reminded of a nameless heroine who's been featured in various chivalric novels. Nameless heroine? That's right. The novels often speak of a great drought from 50 years ago. As the people suffered, a nameless heroine appeared and began to clear away evil spirits and bandit camps. The people idolized her, but never learned her name. All they knew was that she always acted alone. Later, though, she supposedly fell in love with a similarly noble-minded exorcist from Mount Tianhang. They were well-matched in more ways than one, often fighting together as a fearsome duo of otherworldly strength. After the drought ended, the heroine and the exorcist left the public eye and began living a reclusive life in the mountains. All that remained were tales of her incredible accomplishments. The way this nameless heroine faded from fame into obscurity later in life is not too dissimilar from Miss Yuendai. I hope that's somewhat helpful. Thanks a lot, Xingqiu. We knew it'd be worth talking to you. It's nothing at all. Just something I came across while reading. I did do a bit of extra research on her story, but it was just out of personal curiosity. Well, Paimon still thinks that's super cool. Oh, wait, Xingqiu, if you read up on her, do you know of any places often associated with her? Let me think. In the novels, the nameless heroine always appeared near one of three places. Wangshu Inn, the area just north of Jueyun Karst, and Qingyun Peak. Perhaps the real-life heroine who inspired the character was also often seen near those three places. That would explain why those locations appear in the various novels written about her. Thank you much, Ching Cho. <laughs> You're welcome. To be honest, 
I found some parts of the story confusing when I first came across it. If Miss Yuendai was indeed the original inspiration for the character, she may just be able to help me put the pieces together. It's rare for a chivalric hero to fade into obscurity during their lifetime, even after retiring from the public eye. But no one ever saw or heard from the nameless heroine again. There were even rumors that she became extremely ill. I've never understood why someone would go to such lengths to erase themselves from public memory. It's almost as if she was trying to hide from something. There's probably far more to the story than what's been written. We'll be sure to tell you if we manage to uncover the truth. That's a deal. Perhaps, behind the truth of it all, there lies a story more fantastical than any work of fiction. Paimon feels like we just learned so much from Shincho. A drought, a nameless heroine, a life of seclusion. Uh, wait, why does the story sound super familiar? Oh, right! There's a drought in this story, too! Um, Shincho, are droughts super common in Liyue or something? Well, they used to be. But people have long since developed methods to prevent them. Like by cultivating the soil or digging canals. So while droughts do happen from time to time, they are rarely regarded as true disasters. The drought 50 years ago is probably one of the worst we've had in the last several centuries. The crops withered, the streams ran dry, and the monsters in the mountains became rabid and agitated. Countless caravans were attacked, and people who lost their homes came together to form bandit groups. What started as a natural disaster soon became a human tragedy as well. That sounds awful. Yeah. And that's exactly why the nameless heroine was so beloved. She must have been someone of true integrity to do so much for the people while asking nothing in return. Still, as terrible as that drought was, it was nothing compared to the truly calamitous disasters that befell this land in ancient times. They say that back in those days, disasters were both more severe and more common. Only the strongest of Adepti could hope to dispel the ruin and devastation. Do you have any other questions? We're good for now. We're just going to head back and meet up with Miss Xianyun and the others again. Paimon hopes that Granny Yuendai will be able to remember more of her past. She used to be a great hero who saved many people. It's so sad that she can't recall any of it. Anyway, we'll be off now. See you some other time, Xingqiu. Thank you so much for your help. It's no problem at all. Safe travels. You still here? Time erases everything. Even the greatest of heroes will have their legacy reduced to the small fraction of their deeds that were committed to paper. But I think the magic of chivalric novels lies in the way you can catch glimpses of a noble soul from a few mere paragraphs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they called uh they called her? Is it Shen Yun or Shen Yun? Shen Yun? Shen Yun? Shen Yun? I think Paimon is saying Shen Yun. But it's hard to tell. Ah, uh -huh, indeed. <laughs> well, again, yeah, some parallels on this, like Paimon mentioned, some parallels of this person to our Shen Yun character here. Uh huh. But we got some leads, a few places that she could have seen, she, she has been seen in. So I guess we'll investigate those places. Uh huh. <laughs> I have recorded the tune that you requested. I hope it will be of help to you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Straight word for... Ping, what has amused you so? Oh, it's no serious matter. I was just reminiscing about the last time I saw you in this form. Time has wrought such change in this world, and yet... You appear just the same as ever. Time has little bearing on one's existence, nor has one keenly felt its effects whilst dwelling at Mount Outsong. Nevertheless, Ping, one would like to seek your counsel on a personal matter. Oh, why so formal all of a sudden? I must say, 
You're making me a little nervous. <laughs> what is it? Well, the inquiry is as such. Uh, approximately how much Mora would one need to afford a comfortable life in the harbor? Not unlike the one that you yourself lead. Hmm. It does not require as much as you may think. Still, do you mean that... Cloud Retainer, Madame Pew! Uh, what are you two talking about? <clears throat> Nothing save for some trivial matters. <sighs> Have you unearthed any useful details? Shinto has a theory, but let's save it for when two you and Miss Yundai have joined up with us again. Two you and Yundai soon arrive at the same time relay relays Shinto's theory. Young lady, here, have some tea. Thank you so much. What do you think, Shuyu? Does it match up with what you know of your granny? Huh. According to the story, the nameless heroine eventually fell in love with an exorcist from Mount Tianhung. Maybe... That's my grandpa. I don't have many memories of him. But there is this one time, I found a box in her attic full of a bunch of weird sigils. Seems like the stories were right on track. You should probably pay a visit to the three place mentioned in the books. Or we should probably pay the other yeah. So too. Granny might remember something when she's returned to a familiar place. What marvelous tea. I can taste the dew's sweetness in this cup. It's as if I was taking a stroll in the mountains, thoroughly one with nature and at peace. Is that so? Then please drink as much as you like. There's no need to hurry. At our age, it's always nice to slow down and take the time to appreciate pleasant conversation among friends. Thank you. Let's rest here for a while then. Okay, since we have the time, can I ask you something? Sure thing. What would you like to know? Um, I have a secret I want to tell you. Let's go talk over there. Gosh, I I hope if we ever get Madame Pink as a character, as a playable character, I need her to be old. I just want to, I just want an old playable character. <laughs> that would be so fun. You can taste the sweetness of the dew. It's just a feeling, the sensation of stepping out into the mountains on a cool morning. Gazing upon the small droplets of water hanging from the leaves and feeling the sweet stream of water soothe the parched throat with every swallow. It's a sense of calm and serenity, one that stretches on and on until days become weeks, weeks become years. Uh huh. Yeah, I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> oh, she wants to talk with Chien Yun as well. Well, I've been kind of meaning to ask ever since we started talking in the restaurant. But are you guys all adepti in disguise? I'm not, but she oh. is. Uh, about that. Why do you say that? Um, well, you guys just seem super special. Plus, I think I might have heard Miss Shen Yun call herself an adeptus. Uh, yep, that's true. <laughs> Must have been a slip of the tongue. Shen Yun, since you were the one who, uh, misspoke, maybe you can explain to Shu Yu here what you really meant by that. <sighs> one is indeed an adeptus. Is that of some concern to you? I mean, screw it. Why not? Just reveal it. <laughs> I mean, at this point, we're helping her out, so you know, if we don't, if we keep no secrets, then it should be good. It will help us out in helping her out. It will help us out in helping her out. What? You don't sound surprised at all. One time when I was a little kid, I saw a pure white illuminated crane. I had this super high fever, and Granny wasn't around. I was feeling all icky and gross. But then this snowy white crane flew down from the sky. She put me on her back and flew me to her cool adeptus house and fed me 
some sort of magic potion. When I woke up, I was already back in my bed, and my fever was gone. I really wanted to thank her, but I was too sleepy to stay awake, so I never got the chance. So, I just kind of wanted to ask if maybe any of you have ever met an adeptus like that? A pure white illuminated crane? The only two we've ever met are blue and white and black and brown. Have you ever met one that's pure white, Clavertina? Hmm. Never has one met an adeptus with such features. One surmises such a description is but a hyperbolic embellishment that oft results from narrative accounts. That's weird. Was it really just a dream then? Well, even if it was just in my head, it doesn't matter that much anyway. All I really want is to help Granny recover her memories. I'm really grateful for all your help. Leave it to us! Now that we know the three locations, we just need to visit them one by one! Let's go to Wangshu Inn first! Okay, I'll go get Granny! Oh, I thought that was literally just gonna be like, uh, Shen Yun saying, oh yeah, that was me. <laughs> a pure white? I guess Cloud Retainer is a bit blue, huh? And obviously, I think it's Moon Carver, right? It's Moon Carver? Moon Shaper? Moon I, I'm, I forgot already. Uh, <laughs> the other bird is, is brown, yeah, so, hmm. I thought it would have just been, uh, would have just been, uh, would have just been Shen, Shen Yun. What if it was the grandma? What if it's what's her name? Something something. All right. Is Madame Ping say anything now that the uh, lady's gone? Leaving already? Well, just remember that you can come over for a cup of tea anytime. Madame Ping, you will be mine if you get ever get released as a playable character. Maybe next year. Maybe next year's lantern ride. Cause they always do a lantern ride. And they always try to release a character, right? Who did they release last year? Was it Yao Yao? Don't even remember. Wang Shu In. Wang Shu In. Do you remember this place, Granny? Yes. The fish here is very delicious. And if you look out into the distance, you can always spot a bird that's been left behind by its flock. I believe I used to have a room here. It had a window. Yes, yes, I spent a lot of time looking out that window. Which room was it again? Uh, let me look. I'll come with. Hyman's still having some trouble understanding what she's talking about, but if she's so familiar with this place, that must mean she lived here, right? Wait, huh? I sensed a non-human presence and decided to come take a look. That me or Paimon? If you're here, then there's likely no trouble afoot. I suppose there's no cause for concern. It's been a while, Cloud Retainer. I see you have returned to your previous form. Yeah, every time we go to the inn, we all have to meet our little bro, Xiao. <laughs> you met her in this form before. I'm. Bro, of course, they're like, how old are they? Like, thousands of years old? Of course they met each other in this form. I don't know why we're all surprised. Maybe Shen Hu's new, but everyone else should, should already met her in this form. I have indeed. I fought alongside her in this form on many occasions during the Archon War. Literally, there have been cutscenes. Oh, wow. So many cutscenes. With that form, too. of one's newest invention, the Bang Bang Continuous Fire Mechanism. Hands up and surrender, or be prepared to face the full might of the Adepti. What did I just witness? Imitation. <laughs> Hyman knows her all too well. Even so, Cloud Retainer was not always as ostentatious as you describe. You may be unaware, but her talent with Adepti Sigils is just as formidable as her skill in mechanics. 
The Archon War reached its peak after Guizhong's death. The Cloud Retainer who fought beside me in those devastating battles was taciturn and solemn. Only speaking when she had to activate her sigils. A Cloud Retainer who barely talks? Paimon can't picture it. But what happened after that? If you were so powerful in your human form, why did you decide to take up your bird form again? Once one had bid farewell to the world of mortals, what use would one still have for such a shape? When dwelling between mountain and forest, away from the struggles and troubles of the mortal world, a mortal form is hardly the most fitting of choices. After the war, Cloud Retainer retired to Mount Outsong, only revealing herself to the occasional visitor, and always in her avian form. Although I do believe there was an occasion some 30-odd years ago when she decided to don her human form. I believe it was for the purpose of... One believes there is little need to relive bygone matters. Granny, are you okay? Uh... Back then, at this place, I... Perhaps this conversation should end here. I shall take my leave now. Should you encounter any trouble, you need only call my name. However, given that you are traveling with Cloud Retainer, I trust you are in good hands. Everyone! I, I think Granny is finally beginning to remember her past! Slowly now, calm your mind and recount what has been recalled. A long time ago, I stayed here to recuperate from my illness. Huh. So what Shinto said was true! You did fall ill! Was that why you went into hiding? I... don't remember. I'm very sorry, but... but I can't even remember the name of my illness. The only thing I can remember is that it took a great toll on me, and there was no cure for it. I was confined to my room in Wangshu Inn, where I spent many days unconscious. I'd come to every once in a while and stare at the migrating birds outside the window. It was a solemn sight. I remember crying, but I'm not even sure I knew why. One day, I met a traveling merchant. Upon hearing of my illness, he sold me a bottle of soul-revitalizing tea pills. He told me that the pills were concocted using adepti blood and could be used to alleviate my symptoms. Sure enough, I made a full recovery. My illness remained dormant for several decades after that. So the dementia you're suffering from now is actually... Wait, but if your illness remained dormant for several decades, are you saying that what you're going through now is just a relapse of what happened all those years ago? And it was all thanks to the pills that you managed to keep the symptoms in check? Uh, Paimon's brain kinda hurts. Do you remember anything else? I'm sorry, I don't. <sighs> oh, if only I wasn't so useless. Hey, you're not useless. You've done so much for me. Watched me grow up. Raised me. How could you say that about yourself? Oh, fret not, dear child. Granny was just a bit frustrated. That's all. The recovery of a person's memories is a gradual process. Finding pieces of one's past is always superior to not finding anything at all. Let us make haste to the next location. Next location. Next location. Oh, why don't we go to the area north of Dweyunkar's next? There isn't really a landmark there, so where should we start? Oh, Paimon's got it. Let's check out the houses in the area first. After all, if she was there for any length of time, then she would have stayed somewhere, right? Oh, Paimon's really got her thinking cap on today. At this rate, we'll recover all of Granny Wendai's memories in no time. Uh huh, a bit to unpack there, of course. We know that Zhao kind of being involved, he knows a little bit about 
what's it? Um, what's it? Yeah, a little bit about Cloud Retainer, and uh, he he regaled the tale about how um in in combat she used that form that she had now, which I think yeah, is when we first saw her form was during some cutscenes, and then after was what Gui Guizhong something is is I keep calling her Big Bow Girl because I think that's what those big bows are called Guizhong like artillery or whatever they're called. She made those technology. And after she died, that's when the uh, war, I guess, picked up on their side. And she became, like, very quiet, apparently. And just dunk focusing on dunking on people. Which, yeah, makes sense. I mean, I think they were all close friends. So having a close friend, you just die. You kind of, like, kind of dial in. You know, get serious about what's going on. Which would make sense. Um, and then also... I mean, let's go through this first. This place, it's... Did you remember something, Granny? I... I remember. Show you. This is where your father was born. It was a moonless night. I had been injured, so your grandpa was supporting me. We fled together with some being in the fog behind us in hot pursuit. I had exhausted my strength when the labor pains came on, so we took refuge in this house. Your grandpa set up a barrier outside, but neither of us knew if it could hold the monsters back. I remember that night. I remember falling to my knees, reciting a prayer over and over. I alone am the source of this sin. Punish me as you wish before forsaking my oath, but spare my innocent child. Sin? Oath? Did you do something wrong? I don't know. I don't remember. I only remember praying in the darkness with all my strength until the sun finally rose again and the fog cleared out. Eventually, the house was filled with the sound of my baby's first cries. That baby was your father. And I remember I clutched him tight to my chest and wept tears of joy. It was the first time I'd ever felt such happiness in my life. My dad? He was my pride and joy. And so are you, Shuyu. You're so much like him, and I love you both so much. But you're... always going to be different from me. I... Why? Just... what did I do? I don't care what you might have done, Granny. You'll always be the person I love more than anything. You're too sweet, Shuyu. I'm lucky to have you with me. If not for you, I would not have had the courage to come here, to try to remember what I had forgotten. All right. Let's not stand around any longer. There's one place left, yes? Let's go take a look. If one recalls correctly, the next place should be Chinyu Peak. You and I, how fair is your health? I may be a bit slow, but I'll do my best to keep up. I'm sorry to keep everyone waiting. Climb on. I shall carry you to the top. Oh, such lightness of weight. All those who grow old grow frail in the end, do they not? First, you lose your memory, then your health. Eventually, you end up losing everything. My only wish is to depart this world with a lucid mind, to free myself of this torment and the burden it places upon others. Fret not, you have my aid in this endeavor. Uh-huh, so it looks like I actually arrived at the, the correct place first. 
Not bad, not bad if I do say so myself. I may have missed some other stuff in the other areas, which is why I would have liked to go to the other areas first. But it seems we don't have a choice, and we made the right choice the first time around, so we can't go back and make the wrong choices to see what the wrong options were. Indeed. Anyways, a little bit learning from there is that, yeah, she must have done something bad. She must have done something bad for her being cursed like that. But she did eventually was able to have the child. And, um... The only thing I'm worried, the only thing I'm questioning is, what's the time frame? Oh, uh, was it uh, 30 years ago? Hmm, what happened? What, 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 that time frame? What, did that happen some, uh, maybe 30 years ago? Hmm, 30 years ago, maybe? Uh huh. Because we, we're still figuring out what uh, she and Yoon did 30 years ago, why she would go back to her human form. Because that was pretty recent. 30 years ago is not that long ago. And if Xiao knows something about it, then. I mean, maybe she visited him, maybe it, it was a do with the inn, maybe she needed his help. I mean, there's a lot of possibility there, right? Uh, but even before that, we, we learned a little bit in the inn about her having an illness to begin with. And I again, I, I was thinking that the dementia, if we're going to cure her dementia, it's not dementia. And I was indeed correct, whatever she has, it doesn't seem to be dementia, some illness. And... Um, that illness seems to be have cured by some adept blood of adeptus. So of course it reminds me of Clothar. We got our, our bro Clothar, get him back. We need we need some blood. And um And indeed, yeah, I wonder what she Do we need to get that medicine again? It's a lot to think about with that as well. But the final place, we're here. Let's see what other memories she might get back. Oh, we're finally here. Does this place feel familiar to you, Granny, one day? Let me see... How strange... Have I... Lived here before? Take it easy, take well, we it easy! When we were at Wanshu Inn and the abandoned house earlier, though I couldn't remember everything, I still felt a sense of familiarity. I could easily picture myself in those places. But here, I don't have that feeling. Perhaps I did come here in the past, but it just didn't leave a strong impression on me. But did the stories get it wrong then? We can't expect them to get everything right. Yeah, that's true. But they're also the only thing we have to go off of. My mom was hoping this place would jog Granny Uendai's memory just like the others. I'm sorry to disappoint you two. It's alright. We're not going to give up yet. We'll figure something else out. Just you wait. Thank you. If only I could remember. Huh? That way. What's that mountain? Oh, let Paimon look! Huh? Isn't that Mount Outsong? Looks like we've come full circle! Mount Outsong... Mount Outsong... Granny, are you okay? Don't push yourself, Granny! It's okay if you can't remember. You shouldn't do something that makes you sad. Mount Outsong, I... Am I really? Mount Outsong holds some familiarity to you? It does, but I... I can't go back. Are you feeling unwell? My head... It feels all heavy and dizzy. I... Just... What is wrong with me? Cloud... Miss Yanyun, is there anything you can do? Let us go to Mount Outsong. But... Fret not, all will be well. You and I, you have already given more than enough to the pursuit of this endeavor. You may leave the rest to me. I've prepared something that can aid you in suppressing the fear in your heart and restoring your lost memories. It currently resides at Mount Outsong. I never leave anything to chance. All will reveal itself when we arrive. Uh huh. There was a little bird statue on that table that wasn't there before. 
So I'm guessing it might have something to do with that. Uh-huh, indeed. I mean, it does make sense. It does make sense because Shen Yun did say that she had business. She had business, a very important business to attend to besides Shen Ha and Ganyu and, and Streetwood Rambler. And then she also said that when we met with those two people, she did say that fate led us together. And so let's take this opportunity to, you know, uh, carry on with that. Uh-huh. So probably connected. Probably she knew that we, we were going to end up here sooner or later. And, uh-huh. But we're still, again, still a few things we're missing. What did she do 30 years ago? What did uh, Cloudy Tanner do 30 years ago? Is that important? Who was that bird, that white bird that helped the sick Shu Yu? And, of course, a few things concerning Yuan Dai, right? What's the sickness? How did she get cured? How did she forget everything? Was she the person of the story that Xing Cho told us about? I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot to consider here, right? Oh, I mean, this video is getting long. Do I want to continue this video? I don't know how long I have in this video, so maybe I'll keep going. Maybe I'll keep going. Unexpectedly, the final clue leads back to Mount Aosong. Aosong? Aosong? Did Yuan Dai once live here? Why didn't Kyrie Tanner mention this? Either way, time to head back there and see if Yuan Dai recalls anything. Uh huh. Again, I saw this bird statue. I didn't read the bird statue, but I didn't like audibly read the text. I probably should have done that. Come on, just kill Paimon already. What's this thing you've prepared? Here, this is it. Hi, huh? but isn't this the mechanism that you were tinkering with when we first got here? Oh, is it another invention of yours? Precisely. A recent one at that. I am most pleased with the result. I call it the Suspensus Somnium Mechanism. It periodically releases a soft breeze, which when paired with a gentle adeptal tune, can help the listener subconsciously relax, and even enter a semi-hypnotic state. Soothing agitation and anxiety, Relieving exhaustion and insomnia, its potential uses are numerous indeed. And of course, it can also aid in the recovery of lost memories. Oh, what a cool gadget! But if you had it all along, why did you keep it to yourself until just now? We could have come to Mount Outsong right off the bat and saved time on a lot of floating. How preposterous. Had you and I not recalled much of her past through her own efforts, the device would have nothing to draw upon. We Adepti can only help those who first resolve to help themselves. Had she lacked such determination and strength of character, one would have little to offer in way of assistance. Paimon thinks she gets it now. Uh, hey, what's that other thing? As previously mentioned, a gentle adeptal tune is required to take full advantage of the mechanism. One secured such a tune from Streetward Rambler. Only with her melodies can the mechanism reach its peak power. Oh, Paimon can feel what you mean! Paimon's body feels light as a feather. It's as if she's lying down on a warm patch of grass after a super satisfying meal. And you, you and I, is the mechanism helping you to relax? <sighs> <sighs> it appears she has already succumbed to the depths of reverie. Come, join one on this side. We shall give her some time to herself. The drought is over. But why do you look like you want to cry? The potion. It's nearly run its course. I've never regretted needing you. Not even for a second. Please. Please, no. Have you forgotten? This is the world you left behind. 
one of gentle breeze and morning dew, perfectly straddled betwixt the realms of heaven and earth. This is your home. This is where you belong. You should have never left. The you of the past, the me from not that long ago, we should have never. So that is the truth. No wonder this place is so familiar. I... Granny! Granny, are you okay? Cloud Retainer. Hmm. Your memories have returned. Wait, did you just call her by her full name? Does that mean... You already knew each other? Yes. I now remember everything. Everything. Granny, please don't cry. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, don't worry, my dear child. Granny is fine. I'm so sorry, everyone. You've gone to so much trouble on my behalf. It's all come back to me now. The most important thing that I had forgotten was the truth of what I once was. <sighs> One can sense the guilt that now plagues your conscience. Reclaiming a truth long buried is sure to come with a myriad of complex emotions. Perhaps one should recount the story on your behalf while you compose yourself. No, it's okay. Now that I've remembered, I must face my memories head on. Shuyu, everyone, I cannot thank you enough for all your help. I'm ready to tell you my story, if you're willing to listen. Please, Granny, don't force yourself. What happened in the past doesn't matter. I love you more than anything. Nothing you say can change that. I know, dear child. My feelings for you are exactly the same. It is for this reason that you deserve to know the truth. Some time ago, I made a terrible mistake. One for which I could never atone. Is this the sin that you mentioned in Dwayun Karst? What happened? I am, in truth, not a human being. My real form, one that I held for centuries, was that of a wild crane. I spent many, many years living on Mount Outsong, bathing in the soft breeze and drinking the sweet dew of the mountains. At some point, I somehow gained wisdom and sentience. The Lord of the Mountain, Cloud Retainer, became aware of my existence and began to share many stories with me. She even passed on the secret of cultivation to me. Though she never took me on as a formal disciple, I always saw her as my master. Whenever she took out her tools to work on mechanisms or new inventions, I would also stand next to her and watch. I even contemplated completing my training and becoming an adeptus in my own right. I followed her teachings, and time gradually passed us by. Until that fateful day, fifty years ago. Fifty years ago? During the job that struck Wei Wei? That's right. Master regaled me with many stories of her past deeds. From them, I learned how she had saved people from a similar crisis in the past. She was the one I looked up to the most. More than anything, I dreamt of becoming an adeptus like her. I wanted to travel the land like she had, relieving suffering wherever I went. But I was still far from being a real adeptus. I possessed no ability to take on human form and fit in with the crowd. Once she learned of my desires, Master prepared a special dose of human mimicry potion for me. She warned me that the potion's effects would only last ten years, 
And if I were to fail to return to my original form at the end of that time, I would forever forget my past as a crane and become something neither human, beast, nor adeptus. Oh no. So that was the source of your dementia all along. Oh, this <laughs> but you never turned back into a crane. Was it because of grandpa? Indeed, I fell in love. Though he was human, he had spent his entire life training on Mount Tianhang. When we met, it was not only my first foray into the world below, but his as well. Although clumsy and impulsive as he was, you'd think he was the real strange bird among the two of us. But still, just like me, he cared deeply about the world and wanted, more than anything, to cleanse it of all pain and suffering. I could not help but fall for him. But my time continued to tick away. Those ten years passed by in a flash. Yet, I did not want to leave his side, so I... I... Oh no, what happened next? I committed an offense. I wanted to stay with him, even if it meant living a life full of pain and suffering. Even if it meant that I would eventually turn into a monstrosity. I knew I had betrayed Master's hopes. But I was too ashamed to face her. So I wrote her a long letter instead and asked someone to leave it outside her abode. I was convinced that she would not support my decision and I lacked the courage to speak to her face to face. In my shame, I fled and tried to hide from the world such that no one would be able to find me again. So that's why the nameless heroine hid herself away. But that was only the beginning of my troubles. I began to suffer from a strange illness. My memories became hazy and confused and I could no longer keep myself awake. I understood that my pain was caused by my refusal to return to the life I was fated to lead. Along with my memories as a crane, I soon forgot the true cause of my suffering as well. I knew only that I had committed a sin. All I could do was pray for forgiveness, even if I had long forgotten what needed to be forgiven. Looking back, I was beyond lucky to have come across that traveling merchant at Wangshu Inn. It was such a fortunate coincidence that we were there at the same time. If it weren't for those soul revitalizing tea pills, I probably would have. <sighs> Granny! What's wrong? Coincidence? Why did I ever think it was a coincidence? Tea pills concocted using the blood of an adeptus? No. It couldn't be. Master, don't tell me. Back then, that merchant was actually... <sighs> Human custom would dictate the conferral of gifts to be in order when one's progeny is wedded, would it not? Consider the pills a symbol of one's best wishes. <sighs> So when I tried to conceal my name and mistakes from the world and hide myself away in perpetuity, the only person I managed to deceive was myself. You knew where I was all along. One still remembers when you were but a fledgling. You possessed a certain fondness for a particular game. You would hide yourself among a group of wild cranes and ask one to pick you out from among the flock. One found you with such ease every time. Tis the truth most evident. One always recognizes one's own. No matter what form they may take. Oh, wait, wait, wait! Paimon's confused! So, Cloud Retainer, you found you and I again? But how? When? And what happened after that? <sighs> Perhaps it is now time for one to recount the rest of the tale. What the heck is this? 
All right, so uh, video's already getting long, so I should probably end it here. I should probably end it here. But yeah, we did. She did they really give us C one? Oh my god, they gave us C three. Uh huh. A lot to unpack. Yes, seems that uh, yeah. I was assuming. Oh, maybe Yonda Adeptus. No, she's just literally just a bird. <laughs> literally just a bird, hanging out with Clary Tanner and um. Yeah, for some reason the bird came sentient. I don't know how that worked. We're not gonna question that, of course. And um, wanted and a draw happened 30, 50 years ago. And of course, if the bird had the courage to want to save people, being inspired by Cloud Retainer, how can Cloud Retainer refuse to give the crane a mimicry potion to become human and help out the situation? Hmm. Helped out the. I mean, I'm just retelling everything that just happened. Re and then of course, the you know. Yuandai did what she could, and she did well. Unfortunately, did not want to become human because she fell in love, and it tried to hide away. But it seemed that Cloud Return knew about the situation. I mean, well, of course she would. She is a, uh, he's the disciple. She knows everything about. Well, I shouldn't say she knows everything about, but she's very interested in the people that are her underlings, right? So it would make sense. Uh huh. But uh, it continues, and again, I d could continue the video, but I don't want it to be like an hour long, so I have to cut it here. It's already almost an hour long, so yeah. Now you got it here. We're gonna continue next time to see what really happens. The rest of it. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. You're beautiful the way you are, and I'll catch you in the next video. Or hopefully, I'm thinking we're gonna finish Cloud Retainer Story Quest. It's gonna be good. All right. So see you guys then.